Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I'm glad you could join me today. Today's going to be a fun show. On our training Thursday this week, I wanted to share with you that I believe now is a more important time than ever to create your own health team. And I'll share with you exactly what that means. I feel that this is a time where there's so much misinformation being spread. And I also want to share with you why it's so easy for that misinformation to be spread. All it takes is one of the major media networks that are essentially owned by the same one or two different people. And the agenda is put out there in front of you. Plus, during the commercials, you get marketed to for fast foods. You get marketed to for pharmaceuticals. All of these different things you are subconsciously allowing into your brain. I know that you're not consciously doing it. I'm not consciously doing it. None of us are. But they start to get in bed in there because as we sit down and watch a TV show or Netflix or YouTube videos, whatever it might be, and those little ads sneak in there, whether it's an integrated marketing ad, which is basically, you don't even know it's there, but they're, you know, they have a can of Pepsi on their desk or you know, something like that. They're wearing some brand. Then that actually, those companies, those TV shows get paid to put those things in there. It's kind of sneaky. But we let them right in, right? Because we are basically in a lower brain state. We are enabling almost like a trance-like state. We're allowing this to come in. And then, because we're in this relaxed state, we assume that this is the truth. That this TV show, that this news reporter, that this whatever it might be, is actually sharing with us some type of truth. But when in reality, it's scripted. It is really based on a specific agenda and getting you to believe a certain thing so that that agenda can continue to move forward. And the problem is, we've got all sorts of different agendas with uh, big pharma, with big food, with all these big corporations, basically just, I would say, decimating people with misinformation, getting them to live in fear, and honestly, take their own knowledge and just give it over to the government, give it over to these corporations. When in reality, this is our body, this is our life. We need to take care of us. You need to take care of you, your family. I mean, I'll tell you right now, nobody can look out better for you than you. Now, do you have all of the knowledge, all of the information to do so? No. And that's what today's podcast is all about. I don't have all the information when it comes to anything outside of the health realm. Like when I always talk about that, when it comes to like business and corporations, I know who I need to contact. That's essentially it. I know. Okay, we have accountants, we have attorneys, we have bookkeepers, we have all these different people that are amazing, right? Even on my team, I have someone that leads operations, I have someone that leads finance, I have someone that leads social media, like all of these great different things, amazing people. So the important thing is that I know who I need to lean on that's an expert in their field. And in terms of health, I want you to do that for you. It's something that I've done over the past, let's say, five or six years is really made sure that I had my go-to person in all of these areas as well. So I want to share with you what I did. And it obviously came about when I opened up my second location in 2012, was looking at bringing in more people together, making this a truly integrative wellness-based center. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of your health team as a team that you can reach out to at any time that will provide you with more information on what you need to know about your health, that what could be going wrong. So these need to be trusted people. And it's okay with interviewing a couple people. It's okay with doing a couple appointments and realizing 
that person is just not the best fit for you. Personality-wise, methodology-wise, whatever it might be. And that's okay as well. Again, this is your team. Remember, it's your body. It's your family's body. It's your family's health. What is more important than that? I can't think of anything. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your health, not so good. I've worked with many, many executives, lots of money. All right, They do really well in terms of finances. Health isn't where it should be. You can't enjoy what you've worked hard for if you don't have your health. And that goes for everything. Remember, you don't get to enjoy your later years if you don't look out for your health now. And you want to make sure that your kids don't grow up dealing with a lot of the health issues that you may have had or have if they can help it and take care of themselves now. So I'm going to introduce you to some concepts here. You can expand your team and grow it however you'd like. I also want you to think of it like this. This is not going to cost you a lot of money. These are people that you can reach out to when you need you when you need it. So like, that's it. You might not need them all the time. So I want you to think about that. And yes, of course, I understand different people are in different positions. When I was in my early 20s, and of course before, I wasn't hiring some of the people that I'm going to be talking about right now. So again, I understand that part of it. I'm looking at this as ideal world. But at the same time, think about it like this. Okay. I bet you're still able to ask questions, whether it be on social media, listening to a podcast, reading a specific article, whatever it might be, but you have to know who to look for for what information. All right. So I'm going to share that with you right now. So the first person on your list, this is 1A and 1B. One is not more important than the other. Okay. I don't like ego in medicine. The hard part about a lot of people going to medical school and getting a higher level degree is the ego that comes along with it. And listen, I get it. You put in a lot of work. We've all put in a lot of work, right? And so you feel, well, with that, there's a little bit of panache that comes along with it. For me, I think I I had to do some work to destroy some of that ego, right? And I think that's important that we can all just begin to listen and just say, listen, this is where I'm at in my life. This is where this person's at in their life. One isn't better than the other. One choice isn't better than the other. That's the truth. So we have a lot of times medical doctors, MDs, looking down upon NDs. And NDs or other people looking down upon the work that an MD does. Or an MD looking down on a chiropractor. And a chiropractor looking down on a personal trainer. That's not what this health field is supposed to be about. If we step back and take ego out of medicine, we can all realize that what matters is the patient or the wellness client. It is their best interest that we should all have at heart. Not, oh, my form of medicine is better than your form of medicine. Nobody wins that way. That is not what we are looking to do. That's why in the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, we teach about bringing it all together. Now, we're not doing conventional medicine, so we're not teaching that for sure. There's no diagnostic, there's no treatments, there's no cures, right? That's the realm of conventional medicine. What we do is we look at an integrated approach. We look at what the underlying root causes may be that are keeping people unwell or overweight or aging at a much faster rate. So we look at what those deficiencies may be and we try to replenish those. We look at what the toxicities might be and we try to remove those. We work on lifestyle. We work on accountability. That's what it's all about. But I don't want to discount and downplay the role of your MD or PCP. Everybody should have a medical doctor and primary care physician. That is the person that you go to hopefully just once a year. You go to them once a year to have your blood work run. Hopefully everything's within range. They're probably not going to read it from a functional medicine standpoint. I'll get to that next. But you have a medical doctor, someone that you can call if, unfortunately, you get quite ill, quite sick, you need to get checked out. Nothing wrong with that. You want a medical doctor. Oftentimes, on that, in that medical office, there'll be some great nurses and other people supporting the entire team. And so that's great to have. You want that, right? You want, if you're lucky enough to have a, a doctor in the family, a medical doctor in the family, that's great too, you know, for sure. But family and medicine don't, al- don't always mix. But you do want a primary care physician. A lot of people ask me all the time, will you be my PCP? And I said, 
I'm not going to be your PCP. That is not within my scope of practice. And I do believe that everyone should have a medical doctor and PCP. That's not what I do, right? I don't specialize in that. That's what they specialize. I do what I do. They do what they do. Neither one is better than the other. You need both. That's it, right? I was never trained as a medical doctor. So I'm not going to pretend that I am. And that medical doctor, though, should not pretend that they know about nutrition, nutritional supplements, exercise, toxicity, stress reduction, and all of the other items that we specialize in, right? So we can stay in our lane and support our patients or wellness clients the best way that we've been trained, that we're knowledgeable in. So that's why you want your medical doctor. And then on the other side of that, I kind of gave it away. You want your functional medicine doctor or naturopathic doctor or an integrative health practitioner, which I'll, I'll talk about that in one second. So here's the thing. Naturopathic doctor in some states could actually be your PCP. Now, you can still have a naturopathic doctor and a medical doctor. That will still work. I want to say one thing, though, about functional medicine doctors. Be careful that it's not just an MD, and I don't mean just in any negative way, who recommends bioidentical hormones. A lot of people call themselves a functional medicine doctor by doing that. Prescribing bioidentical hormones is not practicing functional medicine. And I know a lot of people are going to be upset about that. But my dedication is to everyday people listening to this show. So I know that's going to ruffle a few feathers, but prescribing bioidentical hormones is not functional medicine. Running a lab, seeing that estrogen is low or high, seeing that progesterone is low, seeing that testosterone is low, and then giving testosterone, progesterone, and maybe even estrogen in some cases is not functional medicine. It's not. I mean, it's prescribing a pharmaceutical. You can't get testosterone without a script. That's just the way that it is. Those are pharmaceuticals. Functional medicine is about running labs, whether you be at-home labs or whatever you do with your functional medicine doctor, and then looking at what might be the underlying root cause for low testosterone, low progesterone, high estrogen, or low estrogen. And then you go to work on resolving that. Now, could you prescribe bioidentical hormones in some cases? Sure. After you've already exhausted other possibilities. And the client is in a specific state that they need that. So again, I'm not trying to attack anyone. It's never my agenda. I'm not even thinking of any doctor in particular. So please, I'm not talking about whoever thinks I'm talking about them. It's not, it's not you because there's nobody that I'm thinking about. And if you're a functional medicine doctor or an MD that prescribes hormones, bioidentical or otherwise, that's okay. That's okay too. But let's look at other alternatives that could rebalance the body as to why those hormones would be off in the first place. All right. I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent because I'm trying to help you create your team here. But I also want you to know who to look for, right? Who to interview. So naturopathic doctors, obviously, ton of education. Definitely recommend a naturopathic doctor if you have one in your area, of course. Okay, so I want to share with you now that we have many high-level IHPs or integrative health practitioners that can also work on the natural health side without providing medical advice. That could be a great adjunct, a great partner to your MD or PCP. But some people will still have an MD, ND if they want to run labs, whatever it might be. And then they also have their health coach or IHP. IHPs are essentially certified health coaches. So that can work either way. So you can actually have tiers if you want. So there's a lot of... So we'll put in my practice. Like Here's an example. All of my private wellness clients, I say, I want you to have your own PCP. If we can get them to run blood work, then great. We'll be able to run that through your insurance. That's a nice thing. And then your at-home labs, of course, then we'll send you those. We'll work those out. And then I meet with people, since my schedule's pretty packed, every couple months. But then every month, I have one of our IHPs on my health coaching team do all of the follow-ups to implement all of the protocols so that there isn't as much time between calls and that we can make sure that we're making progress every two to four weeks as we do those check-in calls. And also, they can answer all of the questions and emails, etc. So it's a really nice way to do it. So if you're a naturopathic doctor out there right now, if you are a functional medicine doctor, you can't see people because your schedule's you know super busy, you can also hire a health coach, an IHP, whoever you'd like, 
and they can see people more often. And that actually gets people way more benefit because you can't just talk to someone every couple months and assume they're making progress. So again, you, on your own, you can hire a health coach uh, as a really nice adjunct uh, to your MD as well. Okay. So now after that, that's our top tier, right? MD, NND, or MD and functional medicine doctor, or MD and IHP or health coach. Okay. Now we need after that specialists. So on your team, you're going to want to, again, you might not need it right now, but it's great to know the people now because why? When something happens, you don't have the time to be able to then look for the resource. You need information right away or you need help right away. So find a good chiropractor in your area because there's no such thing as virtual-based chiropractic work. Yes, you can do all sorts of things virtually chiropractic. I shouldn't say that. But you can't do adjustments when you need an adjustment and you can't do soft tissue work unless you're teaching the person how to do it over Zoom or over Skype or over FaceTime, whatever it might be. So really important, have a good local chiropractor Someone that does more than just adjustments. There's nothing wrong every once in a while when you need an adjustment for something specific. But you also want someone that knows how to work with your posture, that knows how to do soft tissue work, and even a little bit of rehabilitation to get you on your way. A couple years back, I think it it wasn't long ago. We're talking about a year and a half ago. Again, I'm going to share this on an upcoming show. I've, I've had nothing major, but a couple issues, and I always like to share them, over the past like, let's just say even 10 years. Not It's not many. But I like to share people like, listen, I'm not, I always tell people I'm not bulletproof, right? I'm not invincible. Well, I got an injury right above my left elbow and it's called ulna nerve entrapment. And for me, wasn't in my wheelhouse, not something I specialized in. Didn't know that much about it. Didn't even know where to begin. Even again, I exercise background, but I am not, I didn't work in physical therapy contacted a colleague of mine and I said, this is what's going on. I know your schedule's super busy. This is what we did. We just emailed. And he said, look into this. All the nerve entrapment exercises. Started doing them. I wore my arm actually in a brace sleeping overnight. Gone in 30 days. I had it for four months and then it was gone because I got the right information, right? And mine happened just as an exercise-based injury. It was actually an accident. My, I do push-ups every morning. Most of you know my morning routine. A lot of times my, on the weekends, my daughters are then up by then. So I'm doing push-ups. They always hop my back while I was doing push-ups one time. And they got a little aggressive hopping on my back. And they one, <laughs> dove on my back. And I shifted towards my left elbow. And I just felt a little bit of like a little pop, little twinge. Didn't hurt. And I was just kind of laughing it off. I felt, you know, I kind of moved down to the ground. And then about a day later, Two days later, it started to get exacerbated. And I didn't have a lot of feeling down on that left side, painful to grip things, and lost all strength being able to press down. It was pretty bad. You know, again, like, was it it life-threatening? Of course not. It was just an injury, right? But I, I, I was lucky that I was able to reach out to the right person. So that's why, again, these things happen. They're called accidents. My daughters didn't mean to make this happen. And, uh, you know, hey, it's all good now. It's a story I'll share with them when I'm a little bit older. But that's that. So good chiropractor, soft tissue work is needed, adjustments as needed. An acupuncturist. A lot of people have never been to an acupuncturist. I've studied uh, traditional Chinese medicine for many years. Acupuncture is just one part of that. But an acupuncture, I've studied traditional Chinese medicine and traditional Chinese medicine in hospital in China, in old Beijing, China. Sun Yi was one of my mentors over there, Dr. Sun Yi. And he was great. Really, it was really great. I was one of three English-speaking students there and uh, learned a lot. And one of the nice things about acupuncture, though, and I got to see it really like in, in the real world, seeing it was insane. Every 15 minutes, a new person really rolled in. It was, it was a public-based hospital. And we saw people came on buses and they were just kept coming to this hospital. Not not wealthy individuals, just everyday individuals. And we worked on all sorts of things, back issues, et cetera, et cetera. I saw a lot of relief for people in terms of neurological issues with acupuncture. So if it comes to stress and it comes to sometimes injuries or issues neurologically, as I said, or sleep, I've seen great results with acupuncture. It's a nice adjunct, a nice add-on. You go for three to six treatments, 
you'll be able to see if it's making a difference. And then every once in a while, you may actually go just for kind of tune-ups. So again, you might not go right now, but good to know, good to start asking around, hey, do you know of a good acupuncturist? If they seems like it, it goes well with the both of you as you have an introductory conversation, great. Might try a treatment. All right, next is this. I can't recommend enough a good personal trainer. I mean, yes, I've been in the industry forever, but a good local or virtual personal trainer that can keep you accountable and on track to getting results, I mean, worth their weight in gold. They really are. Because there's so many excuses we can come up with for not doing our workout that day. But if you're paying someone, you're going to show up. You really are. Because you don't want to waste that time or, or that money. So a good personal trainer, though, also is going to design for you the best program to, make, to help you reach your goals. So ordinarily, well, maybe you'd reach your goals, maybe you wouldn't. A good personal trainer, especially if they have a background in nutrition, which we'll talk about next, is almost going to guarantee you that you will, as long as you follow the program. And they're going to help you not get injured. They're going to switch up your program probably every four weeks or so. They're going to periodize it, which means they'll have unloading weeks and then weeks where you begin to progress, again, so you don't get injured. They're going to keep your body balanced so you're not doing a machine circuit and doing four chest exercises and one pull exercise for your back, right? They're going to help you avoid injuries. Really, really key. The next person is going to be a nutritionist. Now, the nutritionist to help you with good overall general nutrition might be your personal trainer. They might have a sub-specialty in nutrition. That's how I started. I actually got certified first in nutrition, then personal training. And that was kind of my niche. I worked with other personal trainers' clients on nutrition because I know I wasn't going to try to take their clients, which I know a lot of personal trainers are worried about, but I work with them on putting together good nutrition plans. A good health coach or good integrative health practitioner could also help you with the nutrition part of that. Or if you want something more specific because you might have, let's say, a type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, you might go see a good registered dietitian. If you see a registered dietitian, I just... Trying to say this in the nicest way possible. I urge you to find a registered dietitian that does more than just give you the RDA guidelines. And I'm talking about this. Let me see if I can find the show for you right here. It was yesterday. Yes, 1615. Today is episode 1616. So a lot of registered dietitians, unfortunately, tell you to drink things like chocolate milk after a workout to help repair the body. They tell you to eat pretzels when your blood sugar is getting low. Like just. That's what they're taught in school. And is it deplorable? The answer is yes. That is not what we want to be teaching people. But a lot of registered dietitians, like I have two amazing registered dietitians on my team over at Equilibrium Nutrition and uh, Caitlin, our director of ops over at uh, Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. So both registered dietitians. Great. Fantastic. Well, they did other work after their degree, which I think most of us should, right? We don't stop with just our degree. All right. So nutrition, I've got two more for you. The next one is a good massage therapist. I know what you're thinking. This isn't the right time to spend money or uh, massage is a luxury. It's really not. Massage is one of the cornerstones of draining the lymph. So if you're not doing self-massage, rebounding, things like that, a good massage doesn't need to be deep tissue. Everybody equates having to feel pain when you get a massage. No. A sweetest massage is highly beneficial. Doing work that moves that lymphatic system and calms the fight or flight, which again, you can do with acupuncture as well, is absolutely, absolutely one of the best things that you can do for your health. So whether it's once a month, once a week, once a quarter, you do self-massage, really important to be able to call on something. Plus, let's say you feel super tight and you want to know, hey, who's, who should I go to for this? But again, a lot of massage therapists, you might have multiple. Why? Well, they specialize in different things. Some muscular therapy. Some will do kinesio taping. They'll you know, help you with uh, other issues, even outside of your appointments. Some do cranial sacral. Some do reflexology. Some do rolfing for you know, like 10 appointments where they're, they're really working on some deeper fascial-based issues. So really great to add, again, to that arsenal. And again, you can find a local area that will oftentimes offer massage for $30. A lot of massage schools, students need people to practice on. Now, is that always the best thing? Well... Uh, Not always, not always, but it's an inexpensive option. It's a less expensive option. All right, so it's something to look at. 
And the last category, there are many more, and I would love to hear from you who else you would add to your health coach team. Just head on over to Instagram. You can also post at cabralsupportgroup.com, which is our free Facebook group. But at Instagram, it's just my name, Stephen Cabral, and it's Stephen with a PH. Let me know who else you would add to your team. My last one for you today is this, a therapist or a good life coach. Someone that can help you to kind of see through the forest, kind of let you know what's on that other side when things aren't going as well for you, or you're confused as to what your next turn should be. A good therapist, a good life coach, they don't always tell you what to do. That's not really their goal. Their goal is to draw from within you what you believe is the next right thing to do. So having a really good therapist, counselor, a life coach, et cetera, can be a great person to, again, if you don't need right now, well, here's what you can do. You can have them in your health coach team Rolodex to know who to call on when needed. And my, again, my, my advice is this, meeting with all the people that I just described, even just for an appointment, you can learn so much. You really can, just one appointment. Seeing a personal trainer just once or twice to get a couple workouts to take on your own every four to six weeks can be amazing. Meeting with your nutritionist once a month or once a quarter can be amazing. Meeting with your health coach, again, every couple weeks in the beginning or once a month or check in once a quarter, fantastic. So hopefully this was helpful today. This is absolutely what I do in my own life and I wanted to share it with you. If it was helpful, please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts in protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.